Continuing on with my quest to keep the Battlefield community informed and up to date as much as possible, today I have a video summarising last night's Reddit AMAA, Ask Me Almost Anything, focusing on classes and combat roles, but with a little bit more information thrown in there besides. Plenty of cool answers here from Daniel Berlin, David Serland and Andreas Morell, all three of them being lead developers on Battlefield 5, so the information in this video today can be taken as DICE's current stance on these features. As I've mentioned previously over the last couple of weeks, DICE is really starting to open up and give us more information about Battlefield 5. I think that was sorely needed and I'm really happy to see that we are getting more tangible information about this game. It was really frustrating after the reveal where no information was really given whatsoever. I think that was totally the wrong direction to go. But finally we are seeing more information coming out so it might be quite late on in the game's pre-launch life cycle but we are finally getting some good information here. Starting things off then with something controversial, soldier silhouettes and character customization. I have a few answers that kind of all link together, so I'm going to try and set this all up properly for you. First, we get some clarification around the multiple paratrooper outfits that DICE and EA has been using as pre-order incentives and exclusives for different editions of Battlefield 5. Andreas Morell, he laid out all the info in one of his replies, so we finally have a proper view of what different people will be getting depending on what edition they buy and whether they pre-order the game. So in total, there are eight different sets of gear under the paratrooper heading, and there will be lots of different headings once Battlefield 5 launches. Five of those sets are reserved for people who purchase the deluxe edition of Battlefield 5. One of those sets is reserved if you pre-order either version of Battlefield 5, and I believe this is the one set up to be a Firestorm-inspired set, and recently added as a pre-order incentive when Firestorm received more details via a blog post. And the final two sets are going to be integrated into the Road to Battlefield 5 event that's happening within Battlefield 1 at the moment. Those will be rewards for playing Battlefield 1 and getting lots of XP. So essentially, if you own Battlefield 1 and you complete those challenges, you'll get these two sets for free. Now, as for what these sets actually include, Andrea stated that each will be made up of a helmet, a torso item, and a leg item, as well as getting a weapon skin for each of the class default weapons. Eight paratrooper sets means one for each of the classes in either faction, four for the allies and four for the Axis soldiers. So for the allies, we have the Phantom Major for the captain, Phantom program anyone? I assume Captain means tank driver, although that hasn't been confirmed. The Desert Commando is for the Assault class, Desert Driver is for support, and Desert Medic is of course for the Medic. As for the Axis soldiers, and I'll do my best to get these pronunciations correct, we have the Jagdflieger for the pilot, the Sanitärtar for the medic, the Fallschirmjäger for the Assault class, and the Luftlander Truppen for the support. Right now, we don't have any images of these sets apart from the pre-order one here shown in the Firestorm blog, and this is just a representation at the moment. This isn't the final image. In an earlier reply from Daniel Berlin, however, he states that if you unlock a certain cosmetic item, the example he used was a jacket for the German faction, unlocking that through the progression system, you can then equip that jacket onto any of the classes in the German faction, so that kind of goes against the paratrooper sets being for specific classes themselves. It might be that different cosmetics have different limitations, we don't really know yet. Whether they can be applied to all of the soldiers or only specific soldiers can wear those outfits. And that slight contradiction brings me nicely onto soldier silhouettes. Now, if you're not familiar with this topic, then think about the medic class and the way that that looked in Battlefield 1. You always had those crutches on your back, regardless of the faction you were playing. That is a silhouette. It can be easily distinguished as a class during combat, so you had some idea of what you were going up against. Now, that system 
is not something DICE is fully going to be able to support in Battlefield 5. David Serland confirmed that in a reply to my own string of questions. He did expand to say that the team does have some specific hanging meshes for important roles like the squad leader that has like that radio box and antenna on their back. This is something they want to work on improving over time for other important roles that might need that kind of signposting, but those classic silhouettes for each of the four infantry classes that previous titles had cannot be supported. It would conflict with the cosmetic customization freedom that players are now given in Battlefield 5. Daniel Berlin did state in another reply that cosmetics cannot cross over factions, however. So the Allied and Axis soldiers will have their own pool of cosmetics that will each feature their own colour palette as well. Allied soldiers will have greens and browns dominating their clothing options, and Axis powers, they'll be focusing on greys and blacks. Now I know overall cosmetic customization in the community is an extremely hot topic at the moment. When DICE revealed that Battlefield 5 would be supported by cosmetic microtransactions, that caused enough drama in its own right. So with all this new information, let me know what you think down below in the comments on this one. Moving on slightly now, I want to talk about something David Serland addressed when he was questioned about the expandability of the combat roles in Battlefield 5. His response was that more combat roles would be added through the Tides of War live service. That was reiterated quite a few times in different replies from the three developers. But this response caught my eye because David seems to state there might be room for adding new classes into Battlefield 5, not just combat roles. That's a really interesting statement to see because for quite a long time now, Battlefield games have been limited to four main infantry classes and thus four different styles of play. Combat roles have been introduced to have more direction within each class and players can take those different options depending on what they want to do, but seeing the possibility of more classes overall that would be a proper throwback to games on the Refractor engine. In fact, the last game to have more than four main infantry classes was Battlefield Bad Company in 2008, so that was 10 years ago now. Perhaps the introduction of a fifth class could move some of the combat roles around a little bit. For me, straight away, the sniper combat role comes into mind. To me, it's not really right to put it in the recon class because it's less about passing information on to other players and more about that solo type of gameplay. I'd like to see the recon class split into recon and scout, with scout focusing more on that long range combat with bolt action rifles and recon focusing more on information collection and direct combat. It's interesting to think about, and it definitely shows that the development team for Battlefield 5 is already thinking about this game in the fairly long term. I've also got some smaller responses that I'd like to highlight here. Some of these are actually, in my opinion, more exciting than some of the bigger topics that were covered in this Ask Me Almost Anything. It's been confirmed that support players who use their LMGs and MMGs with the bipod deployed will get an accuracy buff. I think that was pretty self-explanatory. But the LMG and MMG bullets will be able to penetrate through certain fortifications, like sandbag walls. With enough bullets through them, those sandbags will be destroyed, all the while damaging enemies behind them with that bullet penetration. Perhaps those enemies were attempting to use those walls as cover. We already knew that some wooden walls in the game would have bullet penetration features around them. The fact that that's extending to fortifications is some really valuable information here. Next up, sticking with the support class, that class is going to retain access to the shotguns in Battlefield 5. That gives them something lethal in close combat scenarios. And actually, this leaves the Medic as the only class to possess one classification of primary weapon, the SMGs. Now, DICE is aware of this potential limitation, but they have said that there are options within the SMG category that can push the boundary of that weapon class's range of effectiveness. So I expect we're going to see some slow firing SMGs that will retain more damage and can reach a little bit further at distance compared to some of the fast firing ones that maybe feature less damage and can't reach as far out. 
A magnetic mine will be present in Battlefield 5, just like the limpet charge from Battlefield 1, and it will be available to the support class, I believe, but it will be an unlockable gadget. It won't be a default one. Some concepts for more medic gadgets are in the works at the moment, after DICE chose to make the revive syringe a permanent fixture of the class. They removed it as a gadget, and they gave it its own slot and button in the game. That means you always have the revive syringe wherever you go as a medic. Drunksy, Florian, another developer at DICE, stated that this is a work in progress design only on paper at the moment, but DICE is working on an adrenaline inducing buff for the game. The team's not making any promises that this will make it into Battlefield 5 right now. They aren't quite sure how to make it work in a fair way at the moment, but it is something they're thinking about. That is really, really interesting. At the launch of Battlefield 5, you will have one soldier per class in each faction that you will be able to customise with cosmetics, combat roles, weaponry, whatever you want to really. Cosmetic changes can be done in your company, but the combat role is something that can be changed on the fly during matches, just as you can your primary weapon. This means, in total, you will have eight different soldiers to customise in terms of looks at launch, and you'll be able to unlock plenty of cosmetic items through the progression systems built into the game as well. Not every item will require you to part with your cash. The Pathfinder's advanced scouting trait is being looked into as possibly too powerful an action when spawning on any other squad leader on your team, not just your own squad leader. However, David Serlin did mention that the point of combat roles is to provide decent changes to other roles in order to make them worth the switch. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of changes really happen here. Tanker and pilot classes do still exist in Battlefield 5, it's just they won't be customizable in the same way they were in Battlefield 1. Instead, that customization and progression falls onto the vehicles themselves, the tanks and the planes. DICE wants players to spend more time to learn how to use these vehicles properly and then apply different upgrades that suit your playstyle, as well as having cosmetic customization after the launch, instead of just the soldier sitting inside driving the vehicle. And lastly, DICE has confirmed there are no all-kit primary weapons in Battlefield 5 at launch. This means each class has their own set of primaries and there is absolutely no crossover whatsoever. However, David Serlin did state that in the future, some crossover may be considered if it fits the theme of the combat role or the class. Personally, I think the Pathfinder role, which is very different to the Sniper role, should have access to SMGs rather than bolt action and self-loading rifles. It's a far more aggressive playstyle. The other combat role in the Recon class, I'd say, is quite a passive role. But for now, there is no crossover of primary weapons in Battlefield 5. So, there you have it. Plenty of new information regarding Battlefield 5. As I said earlier, I'd love to get your thoughts on this stuff down below in the comments, and in particular, the mention of an adrenaline buff item potentially coming to the game at some stage. Let me know how you feel about that one. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel with notifications switched on, click that bell next to subscribe and make sure they are on, that way you won't miss any of my future Battlefield 5 videos. With so much information coming out at the moment, it's going to be difficult to keep up, but I will always be here posting videos for you guys, so you can stay right up to date with the game. And thank you very much for watching, but until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.